Unit 4, Part 2, Notes. I can write and graph an exponential function. So first off, the exponential equation format is f of x, which could also just be replaced with y. It could be y equals or f of x equals. A, which is our starting value or also known as our y-intercept. It's always going to be that number for y when x is 0. And then b is that common ratio. Also, you can see it called multiplier. Um, it's very similar to slope for a linear function, but in this case, it's called the common ratio. All right, so first off, we are going to create a table and graph of the exponential functions. So I'm going to show you two different ways to create the table. First off, we are going to use the equation. So y equals 3 times 3 to the power of x. So if we think back to that generic form, y equals a times b to the power of x. a was that starting value. So our a value is 3. So that means it's going to go next to 0. Whenever x is 0, the a value goes right next to it. That's your y-intercept right where you start. So 0, 3. Then that b value, in this case it's also 3, but that's the number in that parenthesis right here. And that is your multiplier. So that's the number you're going to multiply by to get to the next number. So we can do 3 times 3, and that will give us 9. And then we can do 9 times 3, which gives us 27. 27 times 3, which gives us 81. And that's how you move down the table as the x values get bigger. If we go the opposite way, if we go smaller, go up the table, we just have to reverse that operation. Instead of times 3, we would do divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Because then if we flip it, now that we know that that number is 1. If we think 1 times 3, that would give us 3. So it all works out as you go up the table, you can divide. As you go down the table, you can multiply. So using that pattern allows us to fill in the table and gives us points that we can plot on our graph. So we'll start with plotting negative 1, 1, which goes right there. 0, 3 is right here. 1, 9 is right here. And as we look, we can't graph 227 or 381 on our graph, which just means we move past it. And then we connect our dots using that exponential graph look with that nice little curve there. All right, so that is one way to create the table. The other way would be to use the equation and type it into a calculator. So I'm going to show you that. I'm using the Desmos calculator that is linked in your Schoology page if you'd like to use that. So I'm going to type the equation 4 times 0 0.5 in parentheses. And then for my x value, I'm going to click this button that's circled here in red. And that allows me to get an exponent. And then I'm going to put negative 1 for that first power, which gives me that answer of 8. And then I can actually just copy and paste this and then change my exponent to 0 and receive all the values for my table fairly quickly by using that. One thing to note, if you are not using this calculator, please pay attention to your order of operations. If you're going to use your phone calculator, you do have to do that exponent operation first and then do the multiply by 4. So please make sure you're paying attention. Um, calculators don't always use the order of operations, so I would be particular about which calculator you're using if you choose to go the calculator route. All right, so now we can take those values and we can put them into our table. 
And then we can plot those points on our graph. And then connect them with our line. So as you can see, the blue and purple lines do look a little different. The blue line is what we call a decay function, because if we follow it from left to right, it's going down, it's getting smaller. It's a decreasing function. And then the purple one, if we follow that from left to right, we can see it's getting bigger, it's going up. The numbers are growing, so we call that a growth function. And really that depends on your B value. So here the B value was three. As a big whole number, you're multiplying by three is gonna make numbers get bigger. So that is a growth function. And then for our blue function, the B value is 0 0.5, which as a fraction is half. So it was taking the numbers and cutting them in half each time. And that means the numbers are getting smaller as we multiply, so that makes it go down. So that's another way to know growth or decay is looking at that common ratio, that B value of your function. All right, so now that we have a basic understanding of exponential functions, we're gonna apply that to word problems. So Mr. Rivers has a beautiful tomato garden that grows very rapidly. He started with only one tomato in his garden, each day after that, the number of tomatoes doubles. Complete a table to show how many tomatoes Mr. Rivers has each day for the next six days. So that zero value, day zero, is gonna be that starting value. He starts with one tomato, so we're gonna start with one. And then each day after that, the number of tomatoes doubles. So doubles indicates that we are going to multiply by two. So each time to get the next value, so each time to get the next value, we are going to multiply by two. So one times two is two, two times two is four, four times two is eight. And as we continue that pattern, we can fill out the table. Write an equation to represent this situation. So we're gonna use that y equals a times b to the power of x. And we just need to get a number for a and a number for b. Now remember, a is that starting value. So a is going to be the value here of tomatoes on day zero. So a is one, what we started with. And then b is that common ratio or that multiplier. What number are we multiplying by each time to get the next value? And that's going to be two. And then we just plug that into our equation. So we say y equals a, so that value is one times b, which is 2, raised to the power of x. So now we can use this equation to answer part c. How many tomatoes would he have on the 10th day? Well, day is our x value. So now we know that x is equal to 10. It's like we're extending this table out and we want which one is the 10th day, 10th day's value. So instead of using the pattern, we can just use our equation and plug that in. So we can say y equals 1 times 2 to the power of 10. And we can definitely use our calculator here. We have 1 and then in parentheses 2 raised to the power of 10. And that is going to be 1,024. So on the 10th day, he would have 1,024 tomatoes a lot of tomatoes. One more example together. Lady Gaga had her latest premiere party. She had 1,000 guests in attendance. At the end of the night, the guests decreased by half each 15 minutes. Complete the table to show how many guests are in attendance at the end of the night. So we are starting with 1,000 guests, which is why we have 1,000 here at minute zero. And then after 15 minutes, the guests are decreasing by half. So decreasing by half means each time we're going to multiply by one half to get the next number. So we're going to cut that value in half. 
So half of 1,000 is 500. Half of 500 is 125. Oh, excuse me, is 250. Half of 250 is 125. Now here, when we do half of 125, if we do 125 divided by 2, we're going to get 62.5. We have to really pay attention to our context here, and we're talking about people. We're talking about guests in attendance. So 62.5 does not make sense because you can't have half of a person. So we would round that up to 63. And then if we take 63 and divide that by 2, we're going to get 31 and a half. So we can round that up to 32. And then half of 32 would be 16. So that would represent the amount of guests at 15 minute increments. Now we're going to write an equation to represent the situation. So again, we're going to do y equals a times b to the power of x. Reminder, a is that initial value. So it's that number that we started with is that 1,000. And then B is that common ratio or the number we're multiplying by each time. So we multiply by one half. So we're going to put one half there. Now we can put that together in our equation. Y equals A, which is 1,000, times B, which is one half, raised to the power of X. And now we can use this equation to answer part C. Again, find the number of guests after two hours. Now two hours, we need to convert to minutes because that's what we were using for our value for time. Two hours is 120 minutes. All right, so now let's answer question C. Find the number of guests after two hours. So two hours is 120 minutes. So if I look at my table, um, 90 minutes, 15 more minutes than that would be 100 and five minutes, and then the next one would be 120 minutes. So I can just extend this table by cutting 16 in half, would give me eight, and then eight and a half would be four. So I know that at the after two hours, there would only be four guests left at the party. All right, that is all of your notes for this portion, you can move into the practice, which has two word problems for you to try answering on your own, and then matching the graphs. So you can take these little equations on the right and drag and drop them into their correct spot. Or if you're doing it on paper, you can just write them in. And then don't forget to take your check-in quiz once you have answered all the problems on your own.